So uh, this is where I, I'm leaving Galveston and uh, uh, and getting into some weather for the first time. You know, uh, I, over the course of the trip, you you learn you learn that rain isn't bad unless it's also cold, <laughs> and then rain's bad. I, I I've got the climb climb overlander gear, and I've got uh, waterproof boots. Uh, I had waterproof gloves for most of the trip, lost a pair uh, on a really rough road, uh, but it was sort of my fault. I put the I, I put the, the uh, my, my sort of uh, summer gloves on and put my other ones behind me, which is usually pretty safe, but the road was so ridiculously rough to get to the hotel, and uh, that was in uh, Bolivia, um, that I actually lost one of the gloves, uh, bounced off the bike. Um, but here I'm, I'm leaving, uh, I'm leaving Galveston, and um, I was I headed into some weather and, and got uh, got pretty wet. But the climb gear, nothing underneath, uh, nothing underneath me got wet. So, um, yeah. So full marks for the climb gear. You, you pay for that, you know. Uh, climb is probably usually, you know, you'd be paying about seven hundred dollars a jacket. It's about the same price for the pants. Probably always best to to try to get a, a, a discontinued item on on um, on one of the websites. Uh, you know, I think that you know uh, they they are pretty much overpriced. Uh, but uh, but it's great gear, and that and that's the thing. I mean, my climb gear lasted me pretty much perfectly the whole trip. Um, the only issue I had is with my climb pants; they were a little bit long, and so when I got off the bike. On the bike they were fine, but when I got off the bike, um, you know, I was running on the ground a bit, so I got a bit, it got a bit uh, worn at the bottom. Um, so next time I won't get the long, the, the tall, tall version in my size. Um, but um, overall, they were, uh, they're really good. And, and and honestly, if you're going to be planning a trip, any a long distance trip anywhere, you have to have the right gear. I mean, freezing cold. You know, and, and it was cold once I got down to southern, uh, southern Chile and uh, into southern Argentina, freezing cold. And when you mix that with rain, you want to have the right gear or else you're going to be completely and utterly miserable. The KTM 1290 also comes with the heated seats and heated grips. You find that with the heated grips, they do work on the inside of your hand, but your outside of your hand, if you're not wearing the right gloves, can get pretty cold. So I ended up getting a new set of gloves in Santiago. And they were fine for the most part, and they they said they were waterproof, but they weren't. So I won't, won't be buying them again. Um, and it's a shame because the gloves I had purchased, the waterproof gloves I had originally, were waterproof and they were pretty bulletproof as well. But they took a long time to wear in uh, to get to be comfortable. They were very stiff for quite a while. Um, yeah, so basically here I'm heading to San Antonio. I think the trip took me about seven hours. I left I left early in the morning, um, and, uh, and and got on got on my way pretty quickly because I was staying in a what I can only be described as a very seedy hotel, and there were some prostitutes on the on my stoop when I got back home after dinner, and uh, you know um, they didn't really bother me at all. But you know it's pretty it was a pretty shitty hotel. Um, no, pretty much nothing worked in the room and I didn't even have a shower, I, I slept on top of the bed, you know, um, but I was pretty tired when I got there the night before, so what do you do? Um, but uh, I, um, I, uh, I was looking forward to getting to San Antonio. I hadn't planned on going to San Antonio because I didn't really plan the trip, I just thought let's just see how I feel every day. I've planned the first few days where I wanted to get to. And then after that, I basically just hit the road. Um, so I'm, I'm using the drift, uh, the drift ghost camera here, and I, you know, I, I put in a mic. You, in the previous video, you would have heard me talking in the background on it, but I put in a mic, but it was crackling, and you know, and basically the only mic that worked well with the drift ghost was the one that was that came that was originally with the device, uh, which I didn't have with me at this time. Um, I ended up shipping them down to Colombia, so I had a lot more commentary once I got to Colombia. Um, uh, so, yeah, but I wasn't—I was never going to use it for these videos anyway. I uh, used the recording for these videos anyway. But um, yeah, the first 
probably half hour, three quarters of an hour of this trip was was along a road like this, which I like. I like these roads a lot more than the other ones. Unfortunately, it was pretty straight. Um, you know, it's not. You know, the the best of the roads come once you get past Texas, and uh, and you know, you get some into the into the mountains, and you get the windy roads once once you get into the mountains. But you know, today was only going to be a short. You know, a short day. It was. You know. 400 and something kilometers which you know if you really wanted to knock it out you could knock it out in four and a half hours but I basically just took my time had a few stop-offs and then you know I had to change my gloves at some stage at one stage to get the, the winter gloves on because the gloves I'm wearing right now I mean they're not waterproof at all yeah that's uh, a picture of a, a little pretty little spot just out of uh, Galveston and um, yeah, it's a, and it it was it was actually quite a nice ride, and here I am. Going, I'm just getting off the main road into into a town and uh, taking a little bit of a detour just for a bit of fun, something different. And uh, you know, the Google Maps does tell you uh, you can you can see other roads and 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 other in other towns and stuff like that. So the maps does tell you. And here I am going through um, uh, off off the main road and. This is always nice. You've got to drive a lot slower, especially when you're around uh, properties. Actually, this time, I can remember this time, I was actually getting really, really low on fuel. And I actually had, it was the first test of my uh, of my bike. And I uh, I was looking for a gas station. And I was on zero for maybe 40 miles. Um, uh, but ended up, uh, ended up getting lucky enough. And... Um, I actually um, only ran out of gas once on the whole trip and it's one thing you've got to learn uh, you know you've got to get into your head is that you've got to get used to uh, filling your tank up when you're half full you know and you've got to especially when you get into some of the more remote areas you've got to really really manage your, your, your gas really well especially I mean my bike's got a pretty good fuel range about 500 kilometers um, about 300 and something miles, uh, so I've got a really good gas range. Some of the other guys had, had you know, about 200 mile gas range, and so they they were all carrying a tank on their back as well, you know. Um, but yeah, and, and about about an hour after this, it started raining, and I think you can see it here now. And uh, this was pretty miserable uh, to to ride through, um, and especially when you've got trucks going 100 friggin' 40. 140, you know, about 70, 80, 85 mile an hour, you know, <laughs> you, you get washed up by those guys. Uh, but it's it's better when you've got the, the two-way here where you've got the, the split split roads. Um, it's not so bad, but it gets, I mean, there's, I don't know how many times on my trip I just got a complete washout by a truck going past me in the rain and uh, through water and stuff like that. So it gets pretty interesting. Uh, with that, with that sort of stuff. But getting back to the gas, um, you went before you go on your long trip. It depends where you're going to. But before you go on a long trip, you just got to get into a habit. Like when I'm in Miami, I, I you know, used to just wait until the gas got pretty low or very low, and then I'd fill up again. But you can't do that uh, when you're traveling long distances. You have to basically fill up. Um, Any time you go past a gas station, you use that as a place to to have a bit of a chill. Um, and so you, you basically, once I got to half a tank, I, I started training myself to fill up at half a tank and just get used to the idea. Um, so like, I, ne I didn't really like to use a gas station as a stopping point. A lot of uh, riders, uh, a lot of riders do that, but I'd rather just get the gas in and then go and park somewhere nice rather than sitting at a gas station and having a bite to eat. So. Get, go to the gas station, fill up with gas, get a bite to eat if you, if you need it. Uh, once you get to Central America and stuff, you don't bother doing that because there's so much great food along the road. Uh, you, you don't want to use the food from gas stations, but probably get a drink from the gas stations, then go and find a nice place to buy something to eat on the side of the road. The best food I had the whole trip was from locals just selling street food, you know. It was just incredible. Never got sick once from it. Well, actually, I did once, but that was, you know, that was a nightmare that I'll talk about in another video. <laughs> um, but uh, 
Yeah, so you know, um, with your with with your uh, with your riding gear, if you've got the right riding gear to begin with, like a lot of people ended up putting like you know they didn't have uh, proper wet weather gear, so they then had to put a a rain rain coat over the top of their riding gear, which is a pain in the backside. But if that's the way you're going to go, I would uh, I would carry it in, in your backpack. Um, so I I had the, the the spare gloves in my backpack. I had the um, I had uh, uh, I had a neck uh, a neck warmer in the uh, in the backpack. I had all everything I needed to just be able to stop on the side and actually not get off the bike if I needed to. I could actually access from there. So I use the neck thing just because a little bit of water does get through the neck, uh, and you just want to have that just so that it keeps the water off you. Um, I, I mean, I didn't have that many day, bad days of rain the whole trip. I actually, even when I got to southern Chile, I actually was recording a video and trying to count the number of days that, it, that I had really bad whole, whole full days, you know. Um, the thing about it is there, there's two parts to it. So you've got your wet weather gear and then you have your thermals. And like even through uh, the Grand Canyon, uh, to that area there, it got pretty cold um, in, in Arizona. Um, Arizona and and even through Baja Mexico even though down down at sea level it was nice and warm once you got up in the mountains it got pretty cold and when it rained you know uh, having having the thermals on underneath is, is a good idea but basically I had my thermals in my backpack I didn't really need them here um, and um, and so and the thing about it is uh, you really want to test out the thermals if you can before you leave because I had ended up having to get another set because they just weren't keeping me warm enough, especially down in southern Chile and southern Argentina. Uh, ended up getting uh, uh, some really nice uh, thermals um, and ditching these ones I bought from uh, one of those outdoor adventure places, big outdoor uh, places, uh, and ditched them for, for a new set. Um, so, you know, in your backpack, you should have, uh, I, you know, I kept some table cable ties, some, um, I had my mini pump in there. I had my, um, my WD-40 in there. I had my thermals in there, which are lightweight, but they were really, they were pretty good uh, for, for the basic cold. And I had my spare gloves and then I had some chewing gum and, um, and I had all my paperwork, uh, uh, my passport and all that in a waterproof bag inside and zipped up in a special place. And the reason why I had that was that all your important valuables shouldn't be anywhere in your loose bags on your bike. So you have them in your tank bag and you have them in your backpack. And every time you get off the bike, no matter what, you don't leave the tank bag on. Um, if you're going to be leaving sight of your bike, then the tank bag goes with you. That's just a rule. Uh, it takes two seconds for somebody to rip something out of there and uh, and if it's something important and something something that's not going to be easily replaced then you're, you're, you're not going to have a good trip. So I basically, um, I had everything I needed and all my importance in the, uh, in the backpack and the, and the uh, tank bag. Um, another thing I did is, through the bike is I, I kept about $1400 US. So I had like 200 in one bag and 200 in a case and and that was my emergency stash. And I and I was hoping that by the time I got, because I already knew that once I got to Argentina and had to fly the bike back, I had to pay cash, which is a pain in the backside. But it was about $1,800 and I thought, well, I can easily get 400. But the problem was, is once I got to Argentina, it's such a black market economy that even hotels and all these places just wanted cash and they'd always say that they're uh, their visa machine was broken and they couldn't accept credit cards and all this sort of nonsense. Um, and you, you'll, you'll always know when you get to Argentina and that is when they're going to do that is because they don't take cash up front. They don't take your credit card up front like on Expedia or Booking.com. And you'll find that Expedia, the further south you go and the further outside of the main cities, you'll find that Expedia is not popular at all. It's Booking.com that has all the listings. Uh, it has some Cabana listings as well, but yeah. So this trip, I think I had about maybe one one or two hours of, of rain, uh, and that was it. And uh, and then then once I got into San Antonio, it was uh, it was quite nice again. Um, but it wasn't a bad bad ride, and, and I never 
I mean, I remember getting to Baja in Mexico and, and say to myself, oh God, I wish I'm never going to complain about hot weather again because it got really cold getting up into the mountains and I didn't have, I, I left my thermals in my backpack and thought I could just, you know, I'm eventually going to come down from this height. And, uh, and, and, and it got pretty cold. Uh, and the worst thing is you'll get your extremities, like your fingers will get, the end of your fingers will get cold and your thumb, thumb will get cold. Um, and you'll find around your neck will get cold um, and stuff like that. But if you have the right gear, you know, I had a couple of different neck, uh, neck warmers. I had a, a lightweight one and then I had a heavyweight one uh, that basically I sprayed with the waterproof, uh, this waterproof spray. It worked pretty well, it stunk a little bit, but um, yeah, so um, I've got to say that the Drift Ghost with camera performed pretty well, even in wet weather, it, uh, it, it used to, it cleared up pretty quickly on its own. I always found that the cases with the GoPros, uh, with hot and cold and, and when you're going in and out of uh, weather, they'd fog up and the, the water would stay on the, on the, on the, on the, uh, on the case and just annoying. So I, I, I mean, I used my GoPro, I had a, uh, I, on my backpack I had a pole um, and a, a little mini tripod type thing. And I used my GoPro for just getting a still shot of myself. So I'd stop the bike somewhere with a great view and I'd set up the tripod, put, put the camera in uh, video and photo mode and just go about my business and sitting down and walking around checking the bike and, and having a drink and stuff like that. And if I ended up with one or two good photos, I ended up with them. I never, never really thought about the photos while I was doing it, uh, while I was doing those shots. A couple of times I actually left the place where I did the shot and left the GoPro there and just realized straight afterwards I had, didn't have it. Um, just, you always have that feeling. And if you get that feeling that you've missed something somewhere, just stop for a few minutes and then have a think about it because uh, it, yeah, it, it always came back to me pretty quickly that I'd forgotten my GoPro. Um, so it's just all these different things that I learned along the way is uh, in the hotel room, you know, get your bike packed. Hopefully you can get your bike right outside your, your hotel motel uh, and you've got a visual sight to it. Get all the things on the bike. And I got into it with just a really good routine with the bike and the strapping and the rock straps and, and the bags and, uh, and, and, uh, and then just doing a sweep of the hotel room before you leave or the motel room or, the, or the, wherever you stay. I mean, I stayed in hostels as well, but I always booked a private room. I didn't stay in one dorm. Um, the worst hotel I stayed in was, uh, I didn't have a choice, I was out of time and it was dark and uh, I ended up staying in one of those auto hotels and, oh God, it was like 9.30 at night and it stunk and when I, it was all dark and the light hardly worked and, and there's a bathroom down the hallway if you went out of your, out of your room. So you basically open up a garage door and there's a bed bunk on the side and not, not looked after well at all and uh, it stunk and I found out in the morning why that the people who stayed there the previous night had um, couldn't be bothered w opening the door and walking five metres down the hallway they just pissed in the corner basically uh, mul multiple times and it just reeked um, so that was fun uh, so auto hotels were out for me from, from that moment on um, but uh, but San Antonio is a pretty cool place it's uh, it's um, <coughs> it's got like a river walk, so it's this really pretty river. The only problem I had with it was it just fa fake, uh, felt a little fake, the whole river. Um, and like a lot of the sort of like little bridges and the side parts of it just all looked like it was a little bit fake. But it was pretty, you know, you know lots of restaurants along the way and it was very popular with tourists. Uh, but the Alamo was fantastic. Um, what I did was, on the, you'll see on the following ride, is I got up basically before the sun came up uh, to get on my next ride to El Paso and, and took a whole heap of photos and the police even let me ride the bike up a little bit closer and get a nice, a nice couple of photos as the sun was rising. Um, uh, and you know, the photos didn't turn out that great, but. Uh, but it was just nice to be there and, and just to read a little bit about it the night before. Um, it's not the same. It, it, the thing that you think about in, in, in uh, folklore is here's, here's that river site crossing, the river walk, sorry. So it is pretty, but you can tell, like, you can see it sort of like looks very manufactured. It looks like a bit, bit of a Disney sort of set, you know. Um, but it is quite pretty and uh, 
the hotel I stayed in there was okay. It was, a, it was an expensive one. I didn't have much of a choice. Uh, I wanted to stay near the city. I, I got there at a reasonable time during the day, so I was able to go for a walk and look around and have a bite to eat and, um, and take it all in. But I didn't go on any of those two little boat rides. And here's the Alamo here now. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty cool place. Uh, I, I'd recommend visiting. I, I, I sort of regretted leaving now. I really wanted to do a couple of tours uh, through the Alamo and, and learn a little bit more about it. But it is a pretty cool, uh, cool spot and um, uh, well worth a visit. Probably two or three days in San Antonio to do it. They had those coaches and things like that uh, around abouts. And uh, but it was a it was a pretty cool little city. And there's some you know there's a little art district area as well, which was pretty cool. That I went into, and uh, but I took off again the next day, and uh, and got out of there, and uh, I don't know what that photo is doing in that spot. But anyway, um, anyway, thanks for uh, thanks for listening. Any as as always, questions or comments below.